So this is kind of a, the printer port isn't dead Amco update. Um, my dad managed to score, it's actually the Amco CNC version. Um, locally, someone had one for sale and they had it for sale about the price of what you can buy one of these for used on eBay. So we lucked out and now we have a turret. I think I'd like to, at some point, make some of these, um, but I think I'm going to use it as is. I, I see a lot of people, like, put a stepper on here, but honestly, the way this works, it's perfectly fine. All it'll use is one output, because all they do is, for one direction, for um, finding the next tool, they run it at 24 volts forward, and then the output goes low, it runs backwards until it hits a uh, pawl. And I'll show you this. I kind of had this apart. Somebody's kind of fixed it. Um, I think they broke the the pawl, the, what goes against the um, sprocket or whatever you want to call it, the whatever indexes this. And you'll see it in here. Um, and they, <laughs> I don't think they made it correctly because uh, I think they made it too short, so then they ended up making a shim to uh, make the center come out right uh, on the Emco lathe. So there's a few things I'd like to change on this. Um, so I'm going to kind of disassemble it as far as I can, because um, I've, I've actually had this apart. So all this is is a little DC motor, and like I say, for one direction, for it to go to the next tool, it runs it at 24 volts, and then it reverses it through some resistors, and it ends up being around 12 volts or a little less. Um, and then it that's what preloads it against the, um, the Paul. So this is it's a little DC gear motor, um, and then it's got a this is what drives the right angle drive in here, um, but pretty cool, pretty basic. Let me see if I can take this apart. <clears throat> yeah, because I had this apart before. <laughs> it's not super tight. And uh, so yeah, I could use just one output from the printer port to do the tool indexing. That's pretty basic. I'd have to look at my I.O. and see if I have enough. I think I do. I think I had a couple extra output. But, you know, this needs a little TLC. It's been hit a few times and dented and, you know. But I'm kind of excited. It's the first time I've actually had one of these in my hand. Uh, let me get a screwdriver. Like I say, I've had this apart. So I don't have all the screws in it. Whoa! Uh, throw the screwdriver on the ground. Oh, and there goes the furnace. Good times. And I dropped that screw. So there's what indexes the, the, the tool turret. And Whoever made this made it too short, so the center is lower than it should be over here. You know, instead of it being centered on the um, chuck when it's indexed, it's actually lower. So then they put a shim underneath it to make it right. I think, honestly, I might modify this and and make a new one of these, but then run a set screw through here so you can do a fine adjustment, uh, a big set screw, uh, fine adjustment to adjust where center is. But this is a uh, set screw. What size is it? Is it this size? No. Is it this size? Yes. 
So this just traps the the Paul all. I'm gonna keep saying that. Maybe that should be a drinking game. And a spring holds it up. And well, here you can see what it does is it. Oops. Let me get the right angle out first. And the, this uh, this Emco CNC that we got that had this turret on is in pretty rough shape. It uh, I think it was pulled out of a junkyard because everything's magnetized. So this really has to come apart and get demagnetized. Everything that's steel, because um, it's I think it was picked up by a junkyard magnet at least once. Um, so let's see if we can get this out of here. This should just come out. Yeah. So here's the, it's like a little in, uh, indexing head kind of, little right angle guy, uh, drive. You can see the, the um, tooth and the actual, I don't know what you call that, the other gear in there. So you can see what it does is it runs it around to the next tooth and then it runs it back for each tooth, for each. Uh, tool location. So it's kind of a simple setup, but it seems to work really well. That's relaxing. So yeah, this is then preloaded with a little spring. I don't know, I, like I say, this used to be like, I think it's just a piece of flat stock tin that usually is in here. But somebody made a very complicated Paul for it, and it, and then they hardened it, which I don't think it really needs to be. So, like I say, I think I'd make another one, and then run a, a decent sized set screw through here to be able to slightly adjust where um, center is. And that would solve a lot of problems. But so yeah. All it is is a simple right angle gearbox and I don't think this is tight. Yeah. Oops. Maybe it is tight. Hold on. So this kind of preloads the, the two bearings that are in here that hold the turret in place. And I haven't had it any further apart than this. I need to kind of push this all out. And wow, somebody dented this shield here. That's just crazy. Like, people were definitely in this before. So. But yeah, I think I'd like, we have some cast iron at the shop. I could easily make this, no problem. The biggest thing would be finding the, a decent set of gears that would work within this. Um, Cause this is, I mean, this is machinable too. I could make one of these. And it doesn't, like for, for us, we don't do production. This is us tinkering. So it wouldn't have to be something that would last 100,000 hours. So, but uh, I'm going to see if I can press this out and maybe be back and show the inside of it. Alright. Well, that came apart way easier than I thought it was going to. So, this, well, I didn't take it all the way apart, but... This, uh, oh, that's keyed in. Did that, oh, <laughs> cool. So the actual gear, it looks like it's brass of some kind, slips over this, and then you can take the bearing off, 
Well, that's pretty cool. Sorry about framing. And then here. That's pretty cool. What is that for? That's weird. It's like they had an oil groove in there for some reason. Maybe they had this, maybe this was done differently at some point, but there's a, there's an oil groove in here, way down, it looks like, oh, maybe, never mind, it's just grease. <laughs> it looked like an oil groove, but it's just grease. So yeah, now we should be able to, what if these are the same, no, they're not the same as the spindle bearings. I think I might just get new bearings for this get the number off of it. They are definitely rough. Very neat. So yeah, this would be pretty easy to make too. Wonder, wonder how hard it is. Oh, it's, it's not hard at all. Oh, it might be a little hard. It's not super hard. Like I say, we don't need it to run for 8,000 different hours. But, yeah, that's pretty cool. Alright, so here's the actual update of the Amco Compact 5 that I'm using the printer port to control. So, I reprinted this and the ball nut um, assembly and this because I moved it all out about 50 thousandths um, and that seems about right so I think I think this will be when I actually create the uh, I'm gonna recreate these in aluminum probably um, that'll work great so I can show you here this is the difference in size of the ball screws this is going to be X. This was X. Um, it's a little crunchy. Um, I'm gonna. This is like it's kind of cool. They're they're two ball nuts and they're preloaded with Belleville washers in between, but they're not that great. Um, and you can't preload them very much, otherwise they, I think they destroy themselves. Um, so going with like a C7 or whatever this is, um, and so. I'm mocking up the x-axis so this will be made in steel um, it'll get bolted to where the other one was and it just fits just fits in there so I'll make another assembly to hold the um, bearings that will hold the end and I might I think what I'll do is I'll shorten the threads because um, I don't I don't need them that long. I only need them long enough to to preload the um, the bearings. So um, yeah, this and I gotta shorten this thread yet because it's a bit too long, as you can see. <laughs> but <clears throat> so far so good. I think I think I can make that fit. Um, these, this is where the ball screws were originally mounted, the ball nut. The problem is, is that for this to work, I need, I need these holes to be a little wider. So I'm going to actually slot these a little. I, I actually did, started working on it tonight. Uh, I had it in the chuck on the Kearney Trekker and then the Kearney Trekker blew a hydraulic hose. So I'll have to fix that first, you know. Some of those hydraulic hoses are probably from the 60s so it is what it is um, but yeah uh, this the X and Y seems really good or the X Z sorry the Z seems really good I think that should work great and I have the servo and I'm using you know these AMC drives which we got a while back They're, they were really cheap these ones take PWM in so they work with a printer port but I thought I'd try one of these cheap, um, what is this, I can't, I always forget. Oh, 
I forget what chip that is. But I thought I'd try this too, because these are like, you know, five, ten bucks a piece. Um, and they take pulse width modulation in, the same as these drives pretty much, same as these drives. So you could run them from the printer port and do the whole closed loop thing that I'm doing here. So, but yeah, so far so good. I haven't really had much time to work on it, so that's why these videos have been few and far between. But uh, yeah, and I have the, if you've seen the video of the um, missing tooth, index that seems to be working well so uh, once I start making the actual parts shouldn't take too long um, and I think I can start putting it back together again um, yeah so anyway talk to you guys later